Number 92. What mass of CaOH2, which is calcium hydroxide, will react with 25.0 grams of butanoic to form the preservative calcium butanoate according to the equation? And then they gave me this type of organic reaction. I know that this is an organic reaction because it has an organic compound here. An organic compound is always consisting of a backbone of carbons and a lot of hydrogens. So hopefully I'll see an organic. Don't know if you guys have to take it. I love it, but I digress. But anyway, let's do this question. Now, I see that there's like a little typo here, right? They should have said uh, what mass of CaOH2 will react with 25.0 grams of butanoic acid, okay? So it's not just butanoic. It should have been butanoic acid. And in this case, the butanoic acid is reacting with the calcium hydroxide. Here's the calcium hydroxide in this equation. The compound that's reacting with it is this. So this has to be the butanoic acid. Now, I don't like writing the equations like this, right? I like it in the shorthand version. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to basically rewrite this in the shorthand version. So it doesn't matter who comes first, but I'll just put all my carbons together. There's, let's see. There's one, two, three, four carbons. So I will say C4. Let's do the hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight hydrogens. So that would be H8. And then two oxygens, one, two. So I got O2. This plus CaOH2 will yield now, they gave me a coefficient already, so there's got to be two of these. And then you have calcium. And then in parentheses, I have this organic molecule again. So I'm just going to count it up. I got one, two, three, four carbons. So that would be C4. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hydrogens now. So H7. And then the two oxygens, one, two. So O2, and then that's two. There's two of them, right? You see how this is in parentheses and a two. So I just put the same thing, but then I just, you know, simplified what was in there. And then plus we have two H2Os. Okay, cool. I think this is much better to work with. Let's see if I could just move this. There we go. Okay. Much, much, much better to work with here. Let's write down what we have. They only told us that we're starting off with 25 grams of butanoic acid. That's this guy, right? That was the starting material. And we want to know what's the mass of the calcium hydroxide. So that's this guy. Okay. So we know what to do here, right? We've done tons of problems like this. We have a starting material and we need to get to the other guy, right, using going from grams to grams, that's our stoichiometric, you know, roadmap, grams to moles to moles to grams. It's right here. So all we're going to do is we're just going to cater what we got, and then we'll, you know, do the work. So my starting material is the C4H8O2. So I'm just going to get rid of the A. I'm catering it to what I have. So we're starting off with 25.0 grams of c 4 h 8 O2, and we can go to moles of the uh, C4 H8O2. Then from there, I can go get my moles of the guy that I want, which is the calcium hydroxide. So that's CaOH2. And then they're asking for the mass, which remember, a mass is always grams. So I got to go all the way to grams. Okay. This is beautiful. Now let's just start it off. It's all ratios from here, right? <laughs> like it's all downhill from here. It's all ratios from here. But it's not downhill though, right? This is fun. Okay, so 25 grams of C4 H8 O2 times by that ratio, 
We're going to throw the unit that we don't want on the other side, so on the bottom, grams of C4, H8, O2. Just look over to see where we're going. We're going to moles of C4, H8, O2, and a mole to gram relationship of the same compound is always using the periodic table. Using the periodic table, remember, it's always one mole, guys, okay? So one mole on top, and then what's the grams on the bottom? That's the molar mass of C4H802. So let's see. 12.01 times 4 plus 8 times 1.008 plus 2 times 16. I get roughly 88.104. Okay, cancel the unit that you can, and then we just keep moving forward. Times by the ratio again, throw the unit that you don't want on the bottom. So mole of C4H8O2 on the bottom. Just look over to see where we're going. We're changing compounds now, so I'm going to change my colors. And that's the moles of the calcium hydroxide CaOH2. And now, oh, that's, eh, whatever. <laughs> A mole-to-mole -mole ratio of different compounds is using the balanced equation. So I go back to my balanced equation to get my coefficients. Now, in this case, they did give me, you know, coefficients in the front. So that, chances are, that means that it's already balanced. You could always pause the video and make sure that it's balanced, but it's, it's pretty balanced here, I think. Is it balanced? <gasps> they did not balance it. They balanced... Wow, okay. I'm glad I caught this, right? You might have caught it already. But here, guys, right? There's two of these. I need two of these, right? You see how I have a total of like eight carbons? So I need a two in front of here. There should have been a two in front of here, right? Okay, so good thing we caught that. Always just make sure to balance it, see? All right, and I, now I think it's balanced. Let's see, is it balanced? They said that there was a two calcium here, so there should be a two here. I think this was maybe a mess up, hmm, because this is not balancing, guys. Let's just change it up, let's see. Let's, let's, let's basically get rid of these coefficients and I'm going to balance them. But I'm really glad we did that, right? Okay, so if I just have to look at this, let's see. If I just put a two in front of here, let's see, I would have uh, 14 hydrogens plus four, so that's a total of 18 hydrogens. Let's see. So I definitely need two of these, so I'm gonna put a two in front of here. And now I have 16 plus two hydrogens, so that's 18. And now we're balanced. Oh boy. Yikes. Okay. So this is the correct balanced equation, guys. Okay. Ooh, thank God we did that because now look, the coefficients are different. And now I have two in front of the C4H802 and I have nothing in front of the CaOH2. That means that there is only one of these. So for the C4H802, I'm going to put a two there. And then for the CaOH, I'm just going to put a 1. So always, always, always make sure to balance. Always double check, okay? Good thing I caught that. Let's keep going. We're almost there, guys. We need to get to grams. So we don't want moles of calcium hydroxide. So that goes on the bottom. And then the grams of CaOH2 goes up on the top. Okay, gram to mole relationship of the same compound, that's back to the periodic table. So let's go, periodic table, it's always one mole. So put the one next to the, the word mole, and then get the molar mass of calcium hydroxide. So we got calcium, 40.08, plus 2 times 16, plus 2 times 1.008 for the hydrogens. So I get roughly 74 point zero nine six grams and maybe I can 
just start this a little bit. 74, I think it was right? 74.096. Okay, cancel this out. Beautiful. Now we're at the unit that we want, right? What's the mass of calcium hydroxide? So let's, let's get to it. Let's see. So we have 25 divided by 88.104 divided by 2 times 74.096. And I get, let's see, I need three sig figs because I have three sig figs up here. So I need 10.5 grams of calcium hydroxide in order to make this reaction work. So if I'm adding 25 grams of the butanoic acid, I definitely need to add 10.5 grams of calcium hydroxide. And that is your final answer. Thank you so, so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. All right. Love helping you guys out. And I, I hope you're doing well out there. All right. Keep studying hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. Good luck on the homeworks. And I'll talk to you soon. All right. See you later. Bye.